Good day, and welcome to the UFC 182 conference call. Today's call is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn the call over to Mr. Dave Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Justin. Hello, everyone. Fight week is upon us. UFC 182, John Bones Jones versus Daniel Cormier for the light heavyweight championship this Saturday, January 3rd, live at the MGM Grand. You probably have seen these guys all over the media today. They are here with us right now. So without further ado, Justin, let's open it up for the first question. Thank you. If you'd like to signal with questions, please press star 1, your touch tone telephone. If you're joining us today, use a speakerphone. Please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, uh, star 1, if you'd like to ask a question, star 1. We'll pause for just a moment as you signal us. And the first question will come from Dave Deeper with Post Media News. Hi. Uh, thanks very much, both of you. Um, with with all the build, all the talk, everything that's, uh, you know, all, all the time that you guys have spent thinking about each other, I just want to know if either of you, to both of you, do you guys allow the thought in your head, you know, what, what happens if you lose this fight? Uh, Daniel, can I start with you with that one? I mean, I have I have not even thought about that for a second, bud. I haven't I won't accept that as my reality. You know, I haven't I haven't thought about that. Do you allow yourself? I mean, I guess you 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 prepare for being Can you hear them? in the fight in worst case scenarios. You know, in in the course of your training, that would be that would be fair. Well, you you, you I mean, you prepare for adversity, but you don't. You know, I mean, how do you really prepare yourself to get knocked down or, or to be stuck in a submission outside of what you do day to day? You know, so I don't think there's, I don't think I've 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 really thought about that. I mean, I think you have to stay positive in your training when you're preparing for something so big. Okay. What well, What about you, John? Have you, you know, how do you allow that thought to stand to your mind? You know, what happens if I lose this fight? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I um, I focus on victory and, and everything that I do. Okay. Uh, just one other one for the both of you. Um, how much uh, how, how much do you guys pay attention to the uh, business aspect of, uh, of of this pay per view? You know, you get your uh, your your commission uh, announced paydays, but uh, you know, both of you will be making. A uh, healthy amount more uh, on top of that, pay per view buys, so on and so forth. How much do you guys pay attention to that uh, to that part of, uh, of the of the fight, John? Do you wanna... I, don't, I don't pay attention to it at all too much. Um, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I don't I don't negotiate my fight purse and and things like that. I do. That's just being good with business. But once the fight is uh, kind of like the set number is finalized, the pay-per-view buys and selling the fight, I, I really could care less. Um, I'm about, you know, I'm trying to get these titles. I'm trying to uh, break these records. Um, you know, I'm pretty happy with what I'll get set price um, outside of the pay-per-view numbers. Huh. Daniel? You know, man, we have, uh, you know, we have uh, we have contracts and we have, you know, managers and, and agents that take care of that type of stuff. Obviously, you 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 get a little excited if people seem interested because you'll make you'll make uh, extra money. But I mean, these these things, these last couple questions are are, are things that are kind of so left field that that um, it's just not necessarily things that you think about when you're going to such a big fight. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thanks, you guys, very much. Thank you. And next will be Neil Davidson with Canadian Press. Yes, thank you. Um, given all the talk and uh, all the war of words, the bad blood going into this fight, do you think it's possible to bury the hatchet Saturday night? Do you think you'll shake hands afterwards and uh, repair the relationship? You know, man, uh you know, you, you gain a level of respect by sharing the octagon with someone. Uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen after the fight. I, you know, I, 
it doesn't really matter to me one way or the other, obviously. Um, every guy I've beat, uh, I've had a pretty solid relationship with. I'm cordial, and they're cordial, and I just kind of go on about my merry life. Thank you. Next question will come from Raul Alzada with Primera Hora. Hi, guys. Green from Puerto Rico. Uh, I was speaking with several martial artists, local martial artists, and we were discussing how the fight would uh, turn out. Uh, most agree that if Cormier uh, managed to close the distance, he had a fair chance to win. But the thing is, Daniel, for his wrestling, has fought guys that are pretty slow, and he hasn't fought the type of fighter that Jones is, you know, with his range and uh, crafty combinations in striking, and therefore uh, Jones entered the fight as a heavy favorite. What do you guys think about that assessment, uh, Cormier and Jones? You know, there's no one way for anyone to win a fight. I, I think people are kind of getting, uh, they're getting kind of like, very narrow, narrow-minded in terms of how this fight can play out, how one guy has to win or one guy has to win. There is no set way in, in how I have to win this fight. I mean, if I don't, if I don't secure takedowns, that doesn't mean that I cannot win this fight. So, uh, I think we need to look at it in a broad, uh, in a little broader, you know, instead of being so uh, narrow-minded. And don't. Um, you know, I I love the fact that people assume that if Daniel takes me down, he wins the fight. I love how people assume that he needs to get close to me, and then I'm suddenly at some type of disadvantage. Um, honestly, man, I'm so secure in my abilities as a fighter, uh, in the clinch, uh, dirty boxing, my jiu-jitsu, my top game, my bottom game, uh, my, my wrestling. I, I really um, I have no insecurities when it comes to my skill set. So, I mean, I mean, Rashad Evans, he was like, you know, to beat John, you got to get in his chest. I'm like, okay. Not, with me knowing that, you think I'm not preparing anything close range, any anything from the bottom, anything. It's, it, I just find it very fascinating, the whole thing very fascinating. Thank you, guys, and best of luck to both of you. And next question comes from Stephen Morocco with USA Today. Hey, it's a question for John. Um, you had some initial reactions to the promotional videos that featured the brawl, and I think at one point you said you were actually offended by it, by the way that the UFC promoted or marketed uh, the fight between you and Daniel. Um, is that still the case? Do you still feel that way? No, I'm not offended by it. I'm hearing a major echo in my own voice. It's kind of, kind of weird. It like says everything I says back to me. Sorry, John, we'll work on that. Okay. But um I'm not I'm not offended. I originally I was offended, it was my first uh, emotion. And then and the reason why I never tweeted or, or made a statement about it was because I mean it's just the UFC. I mean, UFC 151 got cancelled and instantly uh, my image got ruined overnight. Um, that taught me a lot. It really did about the UFC. Um, so them using that to promote fights, it doesn't surprise me. I'm just going to go with it. It's what I said. They're my quotes, and I'll live with it. And, Daniel, how do you feel about the way the fight's been marketed thus far? Well, I mean, you know, you know what the crazy thing is? is like when you look at that video, how – how how am I really painted in in a in a bright light for the things that I was saying, you know? So I'm not necessarily uh you know, I'm not upset about it anyway, you know, they can only use the stuff that we said. You know, if I didn't say it or if I didn't do it, they couldn't use it. So uh it doesn't really matter. I guess I it it's stuff that I said, it's stuff that I did, so uh you know, when you do things, obviously there, there there's a consequence to every action, and my action was uh, being petty, and 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 they used it. And you know what, man? It's it's 
It's got people excited. People want to watch this fight, and, and that's a big deal. Uh, one quick one, if I could, if I could just make, ask a real quick follow-up, um, John. When you separated yourself from the emotion of that the situation following the brawl, um, you know the the ESPN stuff, all the stuff that was said um, with a hot mic on. Um, did, did you ever think? Did you ever have a moment where you thought to yourself, you know, man, this is going to make a hell of a promotional reel? No, uh, a part of me was grateful. It was, it was grateful that the UFC fans. Um, I didn't. Th- hmm. I knew right away when I saw it that it, this echo is really killing me. It's like annoying. I'm thinking about taking my earpiece out. Are you hearing this? Well, this is daily. It's like that on both sides. Is that? I can hear myself too. A lot. You can hear yourself a lot. Yeah, a lot. Okay. Yes. John, why don't you finish that by taking your piece on, just speaking to the microphone, and then we'll address it before the next question. Okay, sounds good. Um, when I saw it, I um, right away I, I didn't know that it would it would be a, um, a good promotional piece. You know, I, I thought to myself, "Wow, I can't believe they used that." But at the same time, I was like, "Dude, the fans are going to eat this up. They're going to love it." Um, and a part of me kind of was glad that they, it, it came out. You know, I, as a professional athlete, as a champion, as a Christian, um, and also as a person who's not close to being perfect, um, I always try to, I try to uh, be a professional. You know, and that's why I have so many great endorsements because I do try to carry myself um, like a person who you would want to adore, endorse. Um, but me, uh, one of my friends and family. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a real dude. I, I'm, I am just me. And for me to tell Daniel I, w- I would kill him, uh, for me to um, swear, you know, I made a conscious effort not to swear in an interview uh, for my whole, my whole career just because I want to have a clean image and I want to be endorsed by the companies I'm endorsed by now. Um, and so for that hot mic to come out and for people to see that side of me, it was kind of a relief because it's like, you know what, I am a Christian. And, and I do try to carry my image in a certain light because I think it's important for the people I inspire and for endorsements. Um, but at the same time, yeah, this is who I am. I, I will swear. I will uh, tell a guy who told me he was spitting my face that I'd kill him. I would, uh, you know, you know, call him what, the names I called him. So it, it, was a, it, was, it was a hit in a way, a, a bad hit in a way, but also relieving for people to see, whoa, Jones actually has a little bit of uh, ratchetness in him. And, you know, they finally got to see that. Thank you. All right, guys, before we go to the next question, I just want to allow our uh, technical folks to address the echo the gentlemen are hearing. So while we're doing that, quickly want to remind everybody, Wednesday, December 31st at the MGM Grand on the casino floor, right next to the race and sports book, beginning at 1 p.m., excuse me, 12 p.m., we will have our UFC 182 media open workouts. Uh, We'll start off. At 11.30 with Daniel Cormier, 12 with Cowboy Cerrone, 12.30, Miles Jury, 1 p.m. John Jones. That's Wednesday, December 31st at the MGM Grand. That is free and open to the public. And then Thursday, we'll have Ultimate Media Day in studios A and B at the MGM Grand, 12 to 2 p.m. That will feature John Jones, Daniel Cormier, Cowboy Cerrone, Miles Jury, Hector Lombard, and Josh Berkman. That, too, is free and open to the public. And then Friday, just as a reminder, we have at 2 p.m. the Q&A with the newest UFC signee, CM Punk, followed by the UFC 182 weigh-ins. At this time, we'll go ahead and jump back into questions. We'll go to Daniel Flynn from Breitbart Sports. Test and test one, two, three. Hey, uh, gentlemen. Anyways. So, gentlemen, it's pretty clear that you don't like each other, each other very much as people, at least from the, the promotional videos. That's what it, it seems like. What do you like about your opponent most as a fighter? Uh, well, first, first off, I I like his uh, you know, I like I like I like a lot of his abilities. I like his his creativeness inside of the octagon, uh, confidence in himself. Uh, and you know, anytime anytime a person wins as many fights as he has in the row, uh, they deserve a level of respect. And at the level that he's won, uh, it's hard not to to almost ad- admire that uh, to a degree. But, yeah, there, there's a number of things that I like about him inside of the cage. 
I wouldn't necessarily say that there's anything I like about them. Um, I do find, uh, I, I do respect that he's able to use his frame uh, so successfully. You know, being a short guy and a thicker guy, and not when you look at him, you don't. He doesn't. His body type doesn't scream athlete, but he's been able to do some amazing things, uh, both in the sport of wrestling and in his MMA career. Uh, so, you know, I, I think uh, he can be somewhat of an inspiration for people who are, you know, are built like him. You know, it proves that you can do great things. It just a matter of your mindset and how you use your body. Uh, so, uh, a question about the uh, the brawl and some of the fallout from the brawl this summer. John, you parted with Nike after the brawl, Nike, and uh, you soon found a deal with Reebok. At the time, we were told the reason for the Nike falling out was the brawl uh, with Daniel, but the timing coincided roughly with, with the UFC working out a sponsorship deal with Reebok, and then you got on with Reebok um, after the brawl, after the, the Nike drop you. Uh, was the stated reason for the fallout with Nike the, the only reason for switching to Reebok for you personally in the sponsorship? Is there something that you can tell us now that you couldn't tell us then about the switch? And then just a question for both guys. You know, both of you guys presumably are going to end, enter the octagon on Saturday night with uh, sponsor insignia showing. A lot of the lower tier guys that I've talked to aren't thrilled with, with the sponsors being told they're not going to be welcome in the octagon sometime next year. Given your status in the sport and the platform that you guys enjoy, do you feel that any obligation to speak up on behalf of the interest of lower tier guys that may suffer some loss in income because of the uh, the bigger Reebok deal? So I'll I'll start with the Nike deal. The truth about the Nike deal is, and, and you know, when I was in front of the commission, I definitely worded it wrong. Um, Nike did not drop me because of that fight, and I kind of owe an apology to Nike uh, for saying that they dropped me um, because of the fight. They actually did it. Nike's been known to stick by their athletes through much worse things uh, than a bra in the middle of the MGM. Uh, the truth is, um, uh, Nike didn't seem as if they wanted to move forward in the in the field of MMA. Um, they weren't activating me in the way that they said they would. You know, they promised me a lot of commercials and and um, and just uh, all types of stuff outside of the financial and the merchandise. Uh, and, you know, my rep came to me and said, hey, John, I'm sorry. I know we promised you this, but um, I, don't think, uh, I don't think we're moving in that direction. So um, they said, we will keep you uh, on board as long as you want to be on board because it's a pleasure to work with you. And um, obviously we'll do everything with you outside of the octagon. Um, but, you know, your deal is still there. I, was, I just finished the second year of my deal. And... Um, I was going to re. I was going to sign. I was going to get ready to start my third year of the deal, and I told them. I said, you know what? Uh, if you guys aren't too serious about martial arts, um, then I don't want to be a part of the company, and I would rather, you know, I would. Res hopefully, I can respectfully leave. And they said, you know, John, if you, um, you know, don't like the deal we have in place, uh, then you know we'll give you that out. So I was supposed to be out anyways. We talked about it. It was already official. Everyone at the headquarters knew, my team knew, that I wasn't going to do my third year with Nike. And then we got in the bra, and uh, my rep called me, and he said, John, I know we're going to wait another month or two uh, before announcing that or before, you know, having you sign a contract to release you. But since you got in this fight, let's just, uh, let's just have you sign these, this paperwork now and let's just, uh, you know, not waste your time and allow you to go your own way. So the truth of the matter is I did not get dropped by Nike. Um, it was a mutual thing, something that we had discussed months before the actual fight. And um, and now I'm with Reebok, and I'm so excited to be with Reebok. Um, it's an awesome deal. Uh, these guys are taking mixed martial arts very seriously, and um, they're taking me very seriously as an athlete. And uh, and I'm just very grateful uh, to be a part of this company, a company that you know appreciates me and, and my sport as much as I appreciate being with them. And our next question comes from Stephen Muhlhausen with SportingNews.com. Thank you guys for taking the time out today. And John, well, I want to start with you. And I had read the dot com piece, and you had said that you no longer really you have embraced the role of the villain. To paraphrase what you were saying, and 
when did you start embracing it? Because you've been really resistant on that in the past. Yeah, I have been uh, pretty resistant. I mean, no one wants to be the bad guy. But at the same time, people tag me to be the bad guy. And I've totally uh, learned to just let go. Let go, you know. I, when I read my comments on Twitter and Instagram, I realize, man, dude, I, I really do inspire people and touch people, and people really do appreciate who I am as a martial artist. And then when I, I look at some of the people who write me negative messages, it's always so dumb. It's, like, so dumb. It's like, dude, you're fake. I've, I've been hearing that I'm fake for so many years. It's like, okay, who cares if I'm fake? Like, uh, I win fights, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to win you over in my personality. I'm here to fight. That's ultimately, ultimately my job. I, I look at the people who hate on me, and it's never anything solid. It's like, dude, you poke people in the eyes in your fight. Uh, okay, that's an accident. Um, or, hey, you're fake. Or, hey, you're you're bigger than the other like heavyweights. It's, it's just always real stupid stuff. So I've learned to uh, kind of laugh at it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just waiting for the person who really hates me that gives me a legit answer or reason. And, and, and no one that has ever really given me anything solid outside of calling me fake. I mean, like, what are we in high school? I'm a grown man. I'm like, okay, you're calling me fake? You can't call uh, my work ethic fake and the things I've achieved fake. There's nothing. I just find it funny. I really do find it funny. I've learned to just kind of laugh at it and just go with it. That's the best thing you got on me. It's like, that's not a bad thing at all. It's not like a girl calling me fake. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. Daniel, what do you make of that, you know, considering, you know, that John – you know, embrace that role that the fans do think of him. Some of the fans. Some of the fans. Some all. of the fans. Some of the I have fans. a great support base. You know what, man? I, I think it's great. You know, it's, it, it's it's easy to live. You know, it's easy to it's easy to to just you know live with no. It's easy to live life with no like. When you can just kind of go about your life and not worry about what people think and. And not 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 make efforts to to try and and and, and sway opinions. It's, it's a great feeling, man. You know, uh, I I don't really know John personally. I'm pretty sure he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's an unbelievable guy to the people that know him well. But it's like just like with me, you know, I'm not the best human being. I'm not the best guy. You know, we can be okay just being a good guy. And I think whenever you try to portray yourself as the best guy, is when people start to go well something ain't right and uh uh I'm glad that he's able to live in his in his in his in his skin and not really care about what people think. So yeah, more to it. I'm pretty sure that now, uh being that he's gonna be like this, you know, hearing him talk just now, like just in that moment, I don't care. Uh you you know, it sounds like a girl and people call me fake. In that moment, if that's him, that's who he's going to be. Let him be him. I'm pretty sure he'll start making more money. He'll start making more sponsorship, and he'll probably gain a lot of fans. And final question, and thank you guys for the time today. I just want to get your guys' thoughts. What do you guys each think is going to be the key to the fight? Key to the fight for me is just to go out there and do what I've always done, to love the sport, um, to enjoy the moment, to have fun, uh, to realize what a gift it is to be able to, to be out there in front of all these people. Um, just to be myself, man, confident, young, fast, athletic, enjoying it, and uh, and let everything take care of itself. I've done everything I can to win the fight. I've trained. Uh, my cardio is great. My tactics are great. My my, uh, my playbook is rehearsed. And uh, now it's, I'll, I'm going to go out there and, and uh, do what I've always done. If I just go out there and do what I've always done, have fun, play the game that I really do love, I'll be all right. I think it boils down to belief, man. Belief that this can be done. You know, a lot of times uh people don't believe. You know, people don't believe when they're when they're staring at a uh at a hill that may be high or, or a mountain that seems uh that, that it can't be climbed. I think it's belief. Believing in yourself, believing in your skills, believing in your team, believing in everything that you've done to this point. Believing that it's all enough, that it's all it all was done to get this job, Saturday night, to get it done on Saturday night, you have to believe. And uh, that's something I have. I have I have a lot of belief in myself. And I have a lot of belief in this matchup. Thank you, guys, and the best of luck on Saturday.
And once again, if you would like to signal with a question, please press star 1. Again, that's star 1 if you'd like to ask a question. The next question comes from Adam Ireland with MMA Canvas. Thanks very much. Um, I'm down here in Australia, um, and I appreciate you guys are very focused on fighting this weekend. But a quick question for John, uh, John Jones. I'm not sure if you're aware, but the UFC recently announced that they're working on a huge stadium show um, in Melbourne, uh, in Australia, late next year. And you actually polled as the number one fighter that Australian fans want to see headline that card. I'm just interested to know if that's something that would be interested that you'd be interested in doing. You know, is that, is that something that, that gets you excited fighting, potentially fighting down here in a stadium show? Absolutely, I would absolutely love to do it. I've uh, the only other country I fought in was uh, Brazil, and um, and no, I'm sorry, not Brazil, Canada. And I don't really even consider that a different country. They're so close. Um, so it would be an honor to fight in front of a different audience. And uh, I totally will be up for it. Against the right opponent, I'd do it. That's awesome to hear. And just one follow-up question on the same topic. Um, GSP is the only UFC champion to headline a stadium event. I just want to know, have you thought about doing something like that in your career as well, like headlining one of those huge events, because it's something you haven't done yet? No, my my, uh, my real dream is not to headline in a stadium, but to headline at Madison Square Garden. I've been saying it since uh, before I was a champion, and I do believe it'll, it'll happen one day. I'm just going to stay faithful and uh, stay ready, and I believe I'll be that guy uh, when the opportunity comes. Awesome. Thanks very much, John, and uh, good luck to both of you this weekend. Thank you. And moving on to Heidi Fang with the Fight Corner. <clears throat> Hello, thanks for the time. It seems that today for both Jones and Cormier, but this layoff has helped to kind of subside the rivalry. Would you say that that's the case uh, for, for Jones? Wait, so what was what did you say? I said it seems as though this layoff that has happened between the time you were scheduled to fight up until now has kind of subsided this rivalry that was going on between you two. So would you say that that's the case? I still can't quite hear you. Okay. Uh, Daniel, can you hear me on that? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, basically, did the layoff help kind of subside the rivalry? I don't think so, man. I think I think the rivalry's still there, but John and I have haven't fought. We haven't fought before, so I, when I think of rivalries, man, I think of fights that or, or or sporting events where you have people going back and forth. I think the Lakers and Celtics. I think uh, I think great trilogy fights. I think uh, football teams that are rivals that are pretty equal, you know. So we haven't fought, but in terms of of the heat between us, I don't think that's going anywhere. I just think that now you see two guys that are only six days away from fighting. Like, what's the point in us yelling and screaming at each other anymore? That that's that's that's, that's done. Like that's done. Before it was all we could do to try and get to each other because we were so far away from the fight. The fight's only six days now. There's no point to that anymore. What's it gonna do? All that arguing, all the yelling, all the name calling. It motivated me through my training. So. Uh, what's the point in it anymore? It serves no more purpose. And uh, so, Jones, did you also hear that? And what was your uh, response to the question? Well, uh, I, I would have to agree. You know, right right now, um, the fight is is uh, it's here. The fight is here. Uh, there's nothing that could be said or anything that to change uh, the outcome of this fight. The, the work is done. The camp is over. And uh, for you know, for me to sit here and be an unprofessional and try to insult him and come at him and get in this bicker and match to sell a few more pay-per-views, it's just, I don't need to. I don't need it. Um, the fight's going to sell, and uh, and the work's already been done. Um, you know, there's a time and place for everything, and, and all the beef and all the craziness um, was appropriate then. It motivated me. I'm sure it motivated him to have great camps, and uh, now the fight is here. Now it's time to uh, to think. Okay, thank you. And we'll take a final question from Kel Dansby with Black Sports Online. This is for both fighters. Entering the fight, were you disappointed that it got moved back? Did it make it more difficult? 
for you, or did the extra time help in your preparation, and do you feel you'll give the fans a better fight because of the layoff? I, I believe it helped me. I mean, anytime you, you get a UFC title fight, you don't necessarily want it on short notice, you know. Not that it was it was real short notice. I, I, I got the call nine weeks before the first fight. But at about six weeks, man, I had some family stuff I needed to do, and, and uh, I could not cancel the family stuff. So I went and did that, and I came back, and I trained with uh, Phil Davis. And after three rounds of hard sparring, I actually got tired, and I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to add these next two rounds over the course of six weeks, five weeks. I was like, you know, it's going to be very difficult for me. And then uh, John got hurt, like, the very next day or something. So uh, then I had, like, it was like a sigh of relief. You know, I was like, now I'm going to get my title fight uh, under the right circumstances where I get a full training camp. I get to focus on him for many months, and I give myself the best opportunity to win this fight. So for me, it's been a complete blessing. It's been a – it's been a uh, it, it was a, it was a, a great turn of events. Now, the, high, the people were so excited for September, but I believe that uh, we'll give a good fight this weekend, just as we would have before. And John, same question. Uh, for me, I do believe that uh, that the fight being prolonged uh, worked in Daniel's favor, uh, but at the same time, I was ready for the fight then, and I'm ready for the fight now. Um, you know, it's not like uh, Daniel's got more time to train and I've been, you know, uh, not using my time. Uh, we both have been, had more time to focus on this fight than on each other, and I think that's why it's going to be a great fight. Um, you know, one thing that I love about this situation is uh, there is no excuse uh, for his performance or my performance uh, when we get out there. You know, when I fought Rampage Jackson, he, he hired the whole muscle farm building and he had a whole staff of people working on his body and his mind for the fight. Leo Machida hired a new strength and conditioning coach and he brought in all these people. Everybody who fights against me, they claim that it's the best camp of their career. They're in the best shape of their career and that's exactly the way I want them. You know, to beat Daniel uh, on a short notice and for him to say, you know what, I didn't have my camp right and, and man, it kind of took me off surprise. I, I don't think I was quite ready. You know, it, it, it means it means everything to my legacy that he has no excuses. Thanks, both of you guys, man. Uh, good luck in your fight this weekend. And I now turn the conference back over to Mr. Schaller for any additional or closing remarks. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Daniel. And thank you, Johnny Bones. We appreciate you guys jumping on the call today. To the media, thank you all. We wish you a uh, very safe and happy new year. We'll see you Wednesday at the Open Workout. MGM, don't forget, that is right next to the sports book on the casino floor. Have a great night, everyone.